kick them. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, there we go. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. Today is day that will live in infamy forever. Uh, April 11th, 2019. Um, initially, I'd arranged to, uh, for today and tomorrow, we were gonna play the 10 by 10 math puzzle. But uh, this morning when I woke up uh, to do all the setup, I woke up around 5.30 in the morning or something, Pacific time, uh, news broke out that Julian Assange was arrested, uh, taken into custody, and uh, he's fully in the system now. And uh, the machine, the gears of the machine have uh, are in full speed. And we'll see what happens, but uh, things sort of changed. I've changed the schedule for today. Obviously, we're not going to play the 10 by 10 puzzle. We're not going to do it tomorrow either. Tomorrow, we're going to do another live stream on Julian Assange. I just thought uh, we do this live stream, uh, and I basically titled the stream, uh, Julian Assange has been arrested. Let's talk about it. For those of you... Uh, interested i'm not sure anyone's uh, there will be people coming in and for those of you that are watching this on another platform i will be loading this on bitshoot for sure and most likely i will be loading this on youtube as well because it is quite important hello hannah how are you doing welcome to another live stream thank you for the follow uh, all this okay i believe uh i was talking with you this morning on youtube uh where you commented on uh, the video that I put out uh, regarding the Rhythm of Time by Bobby Sands, um, what my take was on Julian Assange being arrested. Who is Julian Assange? Julian Assange is uh, one of the most important figures uh, in contemporary politics, economics, uh, media, journalism. Hello, X. Uh, hello, by the way. Hello, Rabinator. Uh, and he will be remembered as one of the most important figures in history, period. Okay. He will be remembered uh, more important than all the presidents that have lived in my lifetime since I've sort of been paying, well, more, more than my lifetime. Uh, well, let's say since the 1980s, since I've been involved in politics, okay? Uh, more important than almost any other journalist you would have heard about. Um, and what is happening to him is going to decide the fate of Western civilization for the next few decades, uh, if not longer, if a serious a blowback does not occur from this, okay? Know the shaman. Hello, Aldous. How are you doing? Hello, Crow the Shaman. Hello, Crow the Shaman. Night 98. How are you doing? Uh, and my apologies, gang, if you guys were here for the 10 by 10 puzzle, but uh, we have to delay the games. Uh, there are some important topics that need to be discussed. Uh, and if you've been following my work, you know that uh, I've mentioned WikiLeaks and Julian Assange numerous times and uh it's something that uh i've been following the news i'm excited to hear i'll be here i'll be here first time and uh, thanks for popping by uh, all this uh who arrested him is he still out of country uh if so has he uh been um, indicated so basically what happened is uh the ecuadorian president right now he's in serious political trouble right uh, the country's serious economic turmoil. The guy's being investigated for major corruption. So he's went to the United States and basically, by all accounts, I've been following this news for quite some time now. Uh, as most of you know, I've been following WikiLeaks and Julian Assange for quite some time. Um, the first video I put out and every subsequent video that I put out regarding uh, trusted news sources and where you should get your news and information, I have always included WikiLeaks in there, right? And uh, basically, the word is that the Ecuadorian president that's 
in office right now he won't be in office much longer he's gonna put his tail between his legs and fly to the United States most likely and seeking asylum himself okay hello Malik and J-Rod so from all accounts he flew to the United States and basically fell on his knees begging the United States uh, thank you for the sub uh, uh, fresh Kiwi uh, he basically begged the United States to cut him a deal and he he in return would hand over Julian Assange and basically what happened this morning um, was base uh, was the president of Ecuador allowed the police in the UK to enter sovereign Ecuadorian Ecuadorian embassy uh, territory which is what the Ecuadorian embassy is to extract an Ecuadorian citizen which Julian Assange has become and take him into custody and what's going to happen most likely he's gonna sit in jail until they extradite him to the United States and that if that becomes a little bit uh, too problematic Sweden has opened up the bogus case they had against them so maybe people want wanting to wash their hands in the UK the politicians will extradite him to Sweden and then Sweden will extradite him to the United States or he'll be renditioned so um, uh, thanks for taking care of business night night um, I'm not sure what the what the comments were uh, but we're gonna be pretty harsh on the troll action um, with people popping in if there is any troll action happening okay um, because there are two different types of three different types of trolls trolls that are malicious you know they're their noise there's trolls who have a secondary agenda um, which sometimes could be in interesting and then there's trolls that are been hired by higher powers to disrupt right uh, we're gonna consider all trolls to be the same right now um, because this is in regards to the future of Western civilization in big part uh, this is gonna play out that way okay for those of you interested who want to follow a live stream that is taking place right now there's a live stream I'm just providing a link there's a live stream taking place on unity 4j on a YouTube channel where they're bringing in a lot of reporters and a lot of people who I consider to be the top of their game who if you had the time you should be following their Twitter feeds their articles they're putting out their news briefings that they're doing um, because uh, I don't like uh, to ban immediately but that definitely warranted it I'll continue tomorrow thanks night night um, I'll try to keep an eye on things as well but I just want to get this intro out of the way first and then we can talk about things what do you say about people saying that Assange threatened the national security of America whose security that Assange threatened N Assange released information documentation all of it 100% fact and WikiLeaks did this okay about war crimes being committed okay multiple times so Assange acting as a reporter through WikiLeaks has released information about war crimes being committed that does not threaten the national security of anyone living in any country that threatens those who commit war crimes now if your state is committing war crimes then the people the citizens of that state should be holding their countries their governments their politicians the hierarchy accountable for committing war crimes okay since the citizens of many countries where we know we have information that their politicians their leaders have committed war crimes have not held their leaders accountable for these war crimes what we are seeing right now is everything else rolling out which is basically the takeover of a Wall Street the deep state the military industrial complex the pharmaceutical industry and all of the powers that be that control capital taking over the countries in question and basically creating huge disparity within within the countries between the citizens and those in power right so by not holding people states institutions accountable for war crimes which is what WikiLeaks has done 
okay, release the information for us not holding those institutions accountable for war crimes. We're next in line, right? It goes back to basically the poem by Muller where it's uh, it's uh, first they came, uh, first they came, right? Where I don't have the poem right now. Where it's one of the most high index. How you doing? Hope Austria is treating you well, brother. Uh, where basically it states that first they came for these people. I spoke. I didn't speak out. They came for these people. I didn't speak out. They came for these people. I didn't speak out, and so on and so forth. And finally they came to me. They came for me, and there was no one left to speak out. Okay. I'm just gonna read some of the comments. Uh, bah, 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 bah. wondering uh, what he did that was so uh, impactful sorry for my ignorance Hannah what he did one of the main things that he did through Bradley Manning and Chelsea Manning right now right so Chelsea Manning released the uh, the collateral damage video and a lot of documentation right in the collateral damage video what you see is basically the US military hierarchy up not just a rogue soldier but the system itself giving the go-ahead to assassinate with drones okay civilians and journalists that were minding their own business right so footage was released of the u.s military committing horrendous war crimes in addition to a lot of other documentation that was released of western powers committing war crimes okay and that was the straw really that broke the camel's back okay but that straw broke the camel's back during the obama administration and wikileaks was releasing information uh, about the bush administration with the torture regimes and stuff like this what really uh showed the state the where the united states is right now politically economically socially was when wikileaks started releasing uh the emails from the dnc from during 2016 um 2015 2016 um leading up to the 2016 elections showing that there was election fraud in the united states the united states elections were rigged right they were deemed obsolete but it wasn't because there was russian hacking of the election it was because the dnc the democratic party rigged the elections in favor of hillary clinton right so they basically uh, the dnc basically voided tens of millions of people voting for uh, bernie sanders right and as soon as that happened the powers that be in the for the democrats really went full retard on julian assange and came up with russia gate and made julian assange the enemy including with the mainstream media which they controlled right so basically julian assange uh, his fate was sealed because he had pissed off both the republicans and the democrats and both of them represent the deep state and wall street and the banking institutions and the pharmaceutical institutions right so he pissed off everyone in power everyone with capital in the united states and that's why they've come after him uh, uh, so fast so hard right so that's what he's done hannah and i highly recommend uh for any u.s citizen or any citizen of western countries to really look into what wikileaks has released one of the ones being the information they released on vault 7 and vault 7 was so important that i ended up doing a soft-spoken asmr reading of their release which showed that uh, the nsa the cia they have the ability to hack any system and mask their hacking with fingerprints uh, implicating other nations or other institutions or other people as being the hackers right so basically they can go commit murder and frame anyone they want for it right and that was an extremely important release where i did the soft spoken reading for uh, 
this news of Julian Assange being arrested and the implications of it, if you're following any mainstream news sources and they are actually approving of this arrest and looking forward to Julian Assange being extradited to the United States and they're not, they're basically attacking WikiLeaks or Julian Assange, you should appreciate that what you are listening to as complete propaganda is brainwashing and you should turn off that source any journalist so-called journalist that comes out that does not defend julian assange uh, has been bought and paid for okay because the implications of julian assange being arrested is that any journalist now living anywhere in the world uh, is threatened by being extradited to any country that believes that that journalist might have written something that might affect their leadership all right or their control of their states or their governments right huge the implications of this are tremendous tremendous um a lot of people that have been following this uh, have warned about what is happening and what is to come um, but now the ball now that the ball has is basically in play with julian assange being taken out of the ecuadorian embassy we'll have to see how things play out how about trolls that just screw around uh, uh plymouth to a certain degree uh but right now um this stream is pretty important uh my tolerance for trolls right now usually people know my streams um i'm very tolerant but this topic is more important than uh some of the other stuff we've talked about i don't like to ban the but i totally agree with you a few things the swedish case seems to have been at least partly dropped by the swedish courts the uk foreign actually uh malik this uh sweden dropped the case completely they just came out today said they're reopening it right so what they've done is basically open up the door just in case they won't be able to the united states won't be able to extradite julian assange from the uk then the uk will say we're going to extradite him to sweden okay and that'll be another back door for assange to be extradited to the united states because sweden will extradite him to the united states unless there's serious backlash in sweden which i'm surprised there hasn't been really uh i have i have had swedish friends in the past and i know about the swedish culture a little bit just through the metal community and there is a serious uh, uh community there which is quite woke quite aware of the political and economic system globally so i'm surprised there hasn't been a bigger backlash in Sweden to what the Swedish government has been doing okay the US, uh, UK foreign uh, secretary today though was tweeting something that looked like an open door uh, to extra a US extradition the problem is that the EU law prevents European countries from extraditing to countries where they could face the death penalty that's a legal blind uh, we'll be interested to see how they try to wiggle free for sure the UK government certainly doesn't have the political capital to just ignore the law um, the thing with uh, Malik the thing with the uh, for sure they can't extradite to places where they have capital punishment but with the extradition uh, papers that were also released today with the US and by the way all of the stuff WikiLeaks had already released right WikiLeaks had mentioned that there was already uh, paperwork in play that the US was gonna extradite Julian Assange they were gonna come in come and get him uh, all these cases what the Ecuadorian government was doing on all this stuff so WikiLeaks still has a 100% perfect track record of releasing accurate information right but uh, Malik the way they're bypassing this extradition hearing an extradition law that they can't extradite anyone that has a capital punishment on the books is in the paperwork that they submitted they've only said they're seeking a five-year term right so the maximum penalty will be five years 
and I've been talking with people online and stuff, and there are still uh, people who are, uh, I'm going to use the technical term for it, because the, if you look up this, the definition of this technical term, it really means what I'm saying right now. There are still people retarded enough to believe the U.S. government. And retarded, I'm not using in a der derogatory term. I'm using it in terms of what it means. It means that they lack the information required to make accurate judgments, right? I, you know, you can look up the definition. I'm sort of paraphrasing here, right? So it's not, I'm using, not using it in a derogatory way. I'm just saying that they're ignorant as fuck, right? They're retarded, right? They're actually saying that people, uh, the, the paperwork is saying they're only seeking a five-year term. There's nothing stopping them with laying on a lot of other uh, charges on him when he's there. There's nothing stopping them from suiciding Julian Assange, right? Where many people in U.S. custody have been suicided before, right? Uh, first they came. Here's the here's the poem. First they came for the socialists. Thank you, Index. First, uh, this is uh, Muller's uh, Mar uh, Martin Nee Muller's poem that he wrote. I believe he was a uh, he was a priest. Um, I forget which denomination he belonged to, uh, but he was a priest that. He wrote this, I believe, in the 1930s, right? And the poem goes like this. First they came for the socialists, and I did, I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me, okay? And just in regards to this, I'm going to read you a tweet that was put out by uh, uh, Susie Dawson this morning. And Susie Dawson uh, goes by um, here. Let me let me give you the link for this tweet. OK. And Susie Dawson is one of the people that has uh, that started the. Uh, uh, live streams every Friday one of the one of the instigators of starting live streams every Friday of uh, uh, covering Julian Assange sort of a vigil right and she tweeted out this morning this this morning and my tweet was this when I retweeted her tweet uh, what I stated was this without a doubt one of the most important statements regarding today's arrest of Julian Assange and quoting Susie Dawson right now quote Beware anyone who tells you what is happening to Julian Assange is okay. They would be the first to lead you to the ovens. Okay, 100% fact. Those, the people in power with capital are not the ones to fear. The people who believe their BS are the ones to fear. Okay, uh, and just on that note, I'm going to read you one more quote, and this one's from Malcolm X. And this is a quote, I don't know, I'm not sure when he put this out, right? But quoting Malcolm X, quote, If you're not careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing, okay? And I'll give you the quote for this as well. And there's different versions of this out, and it's a quote from a bigger piece, uh, just in case you want to follow that, okay? Uh, do you think this will be a sign... Uh, assign things to come uh, with Edward Snowden. I think Edward Snowden is pretty safe right now. Snowden is a different story, different story. Yeah, I think Edward Snowden is pretty safe right now. Uh, I doubt it very much that Russia is going to extradite uh, Snowden anywhere. And uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. How would you respond to those that state he was hacking government systems? I don't know all the details, just playing devil's advocate. He wasn't hacking anyone, right? He was acting as a journalist, taking information that was either uh, hacked, uh, copied over, released as whistleblowers. He was acting as a journalist the way journalists have acted throughout the centuries of taking information that someone has provided to them and reporting on that information or releasing that information. Okay, all journalists, okay, do this. So by extraditing Julian Assange, by charging him 
with espionage and all of this legal jargon, legal BS loopholes that they've created in the system. That means they can do that to any journalist. Okay, that's one of the things that came out during the Obama administration because the Obama administration was really after Julian Assange as well. Okay, because the collateral murder videos that were released, those were during Obama's administration, right? And if you recall, when Obama came into power, one of the first thing he said, we're not going to go after people who committed war crimes. That's in the past. We're going to look forward to the future, right? And if you've been following my work, you know my opinion about Obama. He's, well, we won't get into that, right? But basically he said, oh, those people who committed war crimes, it's okay. They're good people. We'll share cookies with them and have tea with them and laugh with them, which is exactly what he did throughout his term. And he continues to do, right? One of the problems with not uh, going after war criminals is because you empower war criminals and those who empowered them, which is what we are seeing right now. It's a dark, dark road to go down. OK. What was was what was your first reaction to seeing him being pulled out of uh, out of there? I watched it happen and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Um, all this. Uh, I was pissed. I really. Uh, this changes things uh, with the work that I'm doing. Um, just to let you know, I, I, was, I was sort of, uh, I have a whole bunch of stuff lined up to do in response to this. And one of the first things I did was release the Vault 7 reading, right? And I've done, when I was blogging back in mid-2000s, late 2000s, uh, early 2010s and stuff like this, I was uh, writing a lot about this, what was happening politically, economically, war crimes and all this jazz, right? Uh, I've released some stuff politically, economically through videos as well, right? A lot of it uh, not addressing the actual situation, the crimes, war crimes and stuff being committed, but a lot of it focused on the mathematics and sort of trying to empower people, explain to them how the economics works and teaching people mathematics so they can empower themselves and really see the BS for what it is, right? But uh, my reaction was, okay, I'm pissed. And uh, people that know me, uh, when I get pissed, I, I, I don't fall, I sort of push back. Like just to give you an example, uh, I'm sort of going off a little bit, but I'll give you an example of my re what my reaction is going to be. As far as I know, well, forget as far as I know, but when was it? 18 years ago, okay, I took Impark to court, right? And I threatened them with a class action lawsuit. I had the CEO of Impark for all of BC, I don't know if it was Canada or whatnot. I was sitting in a in a arbitration office with a judge and two lawyers from Impark. And if you don't know Impark, Impark is a multi-million dollar, uh, huge, it's hundreds of million dollar company that owns multiple lands across Canada, United States, and I'm pretty sure in other places. They're powerful. They're on Wall Street, right? I was sitting in a room with two lawyers from Impark, the head office manager in Vancouver of Impark, and a judge and me were... I filed a lawsuit against them for $10,000 for giving me a ticket and towing my car because they had property on um, land, uh, native land that they hadn't abided by the, the, the law of marking properly and doing everything properly that a parking lot is supposed to have, which I didn't know I was parking that lot where they gave me a ticket and towed my car. I sued them for towing my car and the parking ticket. The judge told me that there's no way I could win the case. The two lawyers told me I couldn't win the case. The head office, the office manager, CEO told me, I, I don't know if it was CEO for Canada or whatnot, right? But the main person told me I couldn't win the case. I told them to go themselves, right? I went to court. I took that person, the CEO person, I had him on the stands for two hours questioning him, right? And there was a little bit more to this. After the case, after the court case, I turned to him and said, listen, if I get one more letter from you guys, if I get if I get one more phone call from you guys, I'm going to take a full page out of the newspaper 
and file a class action lawsuit against them. That made them go away. Okay, so there's a few things I'm going to roll out uh, regarding my reaction of how I'm going to deal with it. One of the things I'm going to do, Caitlin Johnson is a reporter in uh, Australia, right? She's been doing a lot of reporting on the stuff. And last week, she announced that she's taking off the copyright claims uh, on all of her work, right? And what I'm going to do is uh, start doing soft-spoken readings of her articles regarding WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, okay? So that's one of the things I'm going to roll out that you're going to see rolling out soon, okay? One of the things I did uh, just recently, last week or something, was release Bobby Sands' poem, did a soft-spoken reading of Bobby Sands' poem, uh, The Rhythm of Time, okay? And the reason I did that was because it was sort of, the writing was on the wall of what was going to happen to Julian Assange, and I wanted that out, okay? And that, you know, the, the hits on that video is very minimal compared to everything else, uh, you know, most of the things I'm putting out. It's the shortest video, I believe, that I've ever put out. It's two minutes and two and a half minute reading, right? But the words in that poem, the words in that poem, oh, so, so important. Oh, so, so important. They're just as important as uh, Muller's poem, okay? So uh, you'll see some things roll out. I'm still going to continue to do the other things that I'm doing because I want to make sure the platform that we have on YouTube is not uh, knocked out, all right? It's not censored um, and that we don't get deplatformed off YouTube. So we will continue to do our comic book readings, we'll continue to make uh, liqueurs, go into the kitchen, uh, do ASMR mathematics. And oh, I have some ASMR math stuff lined up to do that I haven't got to because I was taking care of a lot of other things that I was doing because I had promises out there, right? So there's a few ASMR math stuff that I'll be rolling out. So there might be a little bit of uh, delay uh, or slowness in the content being released by me just just because I need to do a shift I need to go through my notes and compile some information and put some stuff together okay but uh, that's what's going to happen uh, just to answer your question uh, uh, and your question was what was my reaction I was pissed uh, by hiring him to fix the broken system bah, 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 bah. they could technically extradite to a non uh, execution jurisdiction in us then the us just move him to a different one i'm sure there are numerous loopholes but i'll be uh interesting to see which one they choose yeah and they could just lock, throw him in a hole like those people in guantanamo bay they're not being executed but man Oh man, what a life. They are killing freedom of speech. They are 100% killing freedom of speech. United States is going into lockdown. What was Julian's motive to start WikiLeaks? Uh, truth, justice, equality, transparency was one of the main things that Assange was for, which is basically uh, and transparency of governments of institutions right basically the idea is this those who hold power over us they have to be transparent individuals who hold power over no one us who are living our lives have to have comp complete anonymity have to have complete privacy okay so governments institutions individuals who are wielding capital wielding power their actions have to be transparent because we have to know why it is they are doing the things that they are doing okay that was one of julian assange's main reasons for doing what he's doing okay uh, and life we are put on this planet we are here to make the most out of our lives whatever that might be for you 
okay for certain people it might be creating amazing gardens for certain people it might be uh, creating beautiful paintings for certain people it might be sharing information for certain people it might be teaching mathematics for Julian Assange it was for building the platforms where we could share as much information as possible okay there are a few uh, you're in a, you are being a bit kind to journalists in the modern world uh, I don't consider most most of these so-called journalists on corporate mainstream media to be journalists they are hacks beyond belief okay there are a few left who view the profession as a sacred duty more often they see it as a meal ticket agreed agreed the modern media's job is to sell their content they do this by telling people what they want to hear or what their rich donors backers and sponsors want them to hear the process is now so deeply ingrained in the profession that I doubt many uh, proper old-school journalists could get published without their title ending up fa uh, facing without their title ending up facing years uh, I agree with you Malik 100% that's why I'm very diligent on I'm not a passive consumer of information I really seek out uh, my sources of news uh, and I try to share those sources as much as I can right hey Chicho hope everything is well I don't know too much about Assange but I'm glad you are covering this issue as it seems to be an act of government silence against those who spread the truth 100% intrepid that is exactly what it is and those who help uh, spread truth meant to hold those in power accountable for crimes against humanity okay extremely important extremely important uh, thank you very much for taking care of business the mods uh, can't wait for ASMR math oh Hannah I got some amazing ASMR math lined up to do also ASMR monopoly strategy 100% I do have ASMR monopolies lined up to do too I got a couple of them actually lined up I just haven't got to them yet uh, for years journalists have been leaking material the difference however is that Assange leaked the material outright without narrat narrativizing it in conventional journalistic ways rather than writing an article on leaked material as was it as was is uh, conventional he released raw documents by doing so he made it impossible for readers to write the material off as journalistic bias forcing them instead to evaluate the credibility of documents real or fake the important question uh, I'm assuming that follows further down da, 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 da. nice uh, da, da, da. thank you I forget who did this index thank you for being here brother I know you said you we couldn't be here but thank you for being here uh, I'll try to keep up with that with the with the chat and one thing uh, just to follow up on index's comment uh, WikiLeaks released raw information 100% correct but they did redact certain information that re revealed sensitive uh, content regarding individuals so they were filtering out certain bits of information that might have threatened individuals and up to this point there was always word that all oh, WikiLeaks threatened people and stuff like this put people in jeopardy there has been never any proof brought out that anything that WikiLeaks released threatened anyone other those in, other than those in power and the system itself okay oh boy the trolls are strong here this is a topic that is going to draw a lot of crap from people so be it okay uh, those are people who uh, have been brainwashed programmed to do the bidding of those in power and one day they will wake up and they will have a midlife crisis and they will look at their lives and go what have I done right and I've known people like that okay or on their deathbeds they'll blink and they'll go what a wasted life it was okay uh, I highly recommend not being one of those people hey Chicho glad to catch you live was sad to see the news break today me too me too sly wolf hey Chicho so sorry I haven't uh, been able to make the streams no no worries spider 
uh, I don't really know what's happening here with Assange but I love being here awesome glad to have you man glad to have you who do you feel is a uh, one politician that you would say you respect uh, there's two politicians in the United States that came out in the last 20 years that I hold tremendous respect for one of them was Ron Paul the other one was Dennis Kucinich those are the two politicians that I wish in 2016 and 2012 and 2008 I wish they had broken off from the Democratic and Republican parties they had come together and created a party and ran for president with one of them being vice president I didn't care which one was president and which one was vice president really those are the two politicians that I still hold a tremendous amount of respect for okay thank you for educating me on this topic my pleasure Hannah I'm sorry if I'm going pretty rapid um, it's just because I've been following the news since 5 30 this morning for the last six hours digesting it and there is a lot of stuff that I've known from the past so I'm putting some things together a lot more on this later of course um, and I did use a foul language earlier I shouldn't have because I will be loading this on YouTube as well it needs to be done right um, but for those of you who will be following who are following my work and stuff like this and don't have an interest in this uh, trust me uh, this topic will be addressed in ASMR math in ASMR cooking streams in ASMR comic book readings and stuff like this but not overtly okay most of my work has included a fair bit of information regarding our economic political social uh, state right now okay and that will continue to be the case sorry for all the questions no I'm here that's what I made myself available for man uh, like for me until five minutes ago I was watching the live stream that I linked uh, on unity 4j okay and as soon as this is over I'm going to go back to the live stream uh, for all the questions I've just always had a lot of questions for you and I've never been able to make a stream no worries brother and you're always welcome to ask the questions on YouTube I'm fairly and of course bit shoot there isn't too many comments on bit shoot uh, right now uh, but I'm assuming that will pick up okay so I will stay active and of course on Twitter and just a follow-up uh, regarding the here let me bring this up regarding the the video that I put out last the rhythm of time by Bobby Sands right let me send you the link on it um, there was one person that made a comment saying uh, Bobby Sands was a terrorist so I just mentioned that they should just read the words listen to the words they're extremely important words right and uh, oops let me stop this here's the link to that poem Bobby Sands reading and the picture you see there in the background that's a picture that I took in uh, 1998 when I went to uh, Ireland uh, both Ireland and Northern Ireland uh, where I walked around okay and took pictures of the murals and stuff like this and I put on an article in the description of that video there's an article that I put out uh, sort of showing you all the murals that I had um, that I took a picture of right during my walk um, uh, in that period right and I consider Bobby Sands to be on the same level as Julian Assange right uh, or vice versa Julian Assange on the same level as Bobby Sands right I would not be surprised if Assange decides to go on a hunger strike I hope he doesn't I hope he doesn't because uh, he, he, is, he is a powerful human being to have allowed himself put himself in this situation have uh, to go through this right I hope he doesn't go on hunger strike Julian Assange because if he does he will most likely see it to the end and if you want to know what that means what that implies okay there's a documentary out on Bobby Sands watch that documentary on Bobby Sands 
also there's a movie out called the hunger okay or called hunger regard on bobby sands and watch that movie as well and that'll give you an idea of what a hunger strike is like and what happens when you're incarcerated uh, by an empire that has no regard for human life uh, equality justice right um, so that was important poem to put out I'm glad I put that out last week and what I'm going to do I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it today tomorrow or next week I need to sort of uh, ground a little bit but I'm going to put out a video most likely the next video that I put out is going to be a video of giving you a little background as to how I came to Bobby Sands poem the rhythm of time okay and how I became interested in Irish history okay and it goes back to the time uh, of my high school days okay I won't I won't say anything more but I'm gonna most likely tell a story of uh, how I became interested in what the British Empire has done throughout time and what uh, what I have learned by learning about Irish history and how I came to read this poem and put out this video okay I've been doing a podcast on the effect of political correctness and outrage culture has has on freedom of speech do you have any thoughts on whether or not political correctness has a negative effect on how people are able to communicate and debate 100% all this what is being done uh, political correctness uh, political correctness I'll put it in put it in quotes PC culture right I'm gonna make a separation here between PC culture and not being an asshole right not being racist not being derogatory and stuff like this right basically what's happened is capital acting as power has hijacked language and what they're doing is they're using their PC politically correctness BS to kill freedom of speech right so all those people who have an issue with using words which is what it is right they have they have basically weaponized words okay and what they're doing is they're not allowing a discourse to take place so they're uh, they're controlling dialogue right and by controlling dialogue they're able to incarcerate people destroy people's lives deplatform people censor filter and kill discourse okay horrendous horrendous it's a dark place to be sorry for saying oh, I like your books well I don't I haven't read any books but maybe I will one day and I plan to one day but they're not going to be on anything uh, related to religion or whatnot uh, the book that I will be writing is going to be about mathematics and how to learn mathematics okay and by empowering people to learn mathematics I basically I'm basically helping them to acquire freedom okay I'm empowering them to be able to live their lives without being manipulated without being controlled okay uh, that's basically it right that's my grand design uh, I got to go to go to band practice okay intrepid I hope you have a fantastic time but I will be staying up on this topic for sure thanks again Chicho. my pleasure intrepid um, I think many of us have uh, uh, th there's a yeah there's a lot of things going on it's basically basically the reaction right now is gonna be a couple of orders of magnitude grander than when Obama basically the Obama administration got all the police force together in the United States to kill Occupy movement overnight right the backlash from that was what we are seeing right now being rolled out with alternate technologies with cryptocurrencies with um, with uh, different types of platforms with all these different types of podcasts and all of this 
different types of information being put together and people empowering each other to be able to live free lives. What's happening right now with Julian Assange is going to be a few orders of magnitude grander than that. Okay, it won't go away. I've read that Ecuador made promises that Assange would not be tortured if he found himself extradited to the US. Does Assange have any legal recourse against Ecuador if this does not occur? And if if not, will Ecuador be held accountable by the greater international community? Uh, what's going to happen, uh, Index, in my opinion is, I, I forget, uh, what's the pro Ecuador's president's uh, name? Uh, he's my assumption is this he's gonna if he stays in Ecuador he's gonna go to jail right so I'm pretty sure the deal that he cut he's gonna ask for asylum in the United States and he's gonna get it right that was I'm pretty sure that's the deal that he got Assange is, is an Ecuadorian citizen and according to the United States right now water torture is no longer well maybe it is considered torture but solitary confinement is no longer considered torture uh, many other things are no longer considered to be torture in the united states basically what happened during the bush jr and the obama administrations they normalized torture right so i don't think assange will have any recourse against ecuador okay and will Ecuador be held accountable for what they've done? I sure hope so, okay? But it's not Ecuador as a country. It's Ecuador's puppet leaders who have cut deals with the institutions and those in power in the Western world, right? So I'm pretty sure the Ecuadorian people are appalled with what just happened really i'd be surprised like seriously i'll be surprised if in the next few days we don't see mass demonstrations in ecuador serious clampdowns by the military in ecuador where the citizens of ecuador try to overthrow their government i i don't want to say overthrow let's not i don't want to go overboard um but uh, i'm expecting to, there to be serious backlash in ecuador serious backlash thank you for answering the question so beautifully wish i could have uh you on my podcast uh anytime you want me to be on your podcast all this i'll uh, i'll do uh, i'll be glad to do regarding these topics i'll make myself available uh 1984 is the uh, seminal text on the effects of the control of language by introducing the language of new speak yeah they make it necessary for the protagonist in speaking out against the government of his nation to say i hate purity i hate goodness i don't want virtue to exist anymore anywhere i want everyone corrupt what he is actually trying to say is that he hates adherence to the party doctrine and he wants everyone to think for themselves but he no longer has the words to express that thought 100 agreed malik right there are words that uh like even myself right now like if i was just doing strictly political videos i wouldn't be applying a filter to myself in regards to some of the content i'm putting out or most of the content i'm putting out but to me it's really important to because i've seen i've been in the education system involved with education teaching mathematics for the last 20 years or so right and i've seen how how destructive the central education system has been to educating people so i've seen math education and education in general in canada just deteriorate like really it's not even a boiling a frog and slowly in water it they've they've had they put puppet leaders in power in bc anyway in canada one of the things happened the liberals came into power which is different than the liberals federally they came into power these people were corrupt like really i can't believe this our citizens here were so passive that they allowed such corrupt people 
to just destroy the social infrastructure that we had right starting one of the places they did this with with education right so they they gutted our education system here totally gutted it so i was watching this math curriculum be gutted where they no longer even taught statistics for anyone that was taking the recommended pre-calculus math course in high school so just imagine graduating high school without knowing statistics in the age of big data right in the age where some of the largest companies in the world their main job is to process data right and they no longer taught data processing in high school right horrendous horrendous right so I want to make sure we still have a platform where we can teach mathematics to people that need to learn it because they need to learn this information to be able to have freedom of choice to freedom to live to do what they want to do right but guaranteed in that data processing in that information that we're going to create there has been and there will continue to be a sub message where we're making sure that uh, the tools that we're providing to people uh, there's a message in there uh, sort of recommendation uh, from my part to use it well right for the betterment of all of us not just those in power to get crumbs thrown at you so you can pick up the little crumbs that they throw at you where you say oh you're doing well because you're a lap dog eating crumbs from the from the ground of these people and any time that they want they will sacrifice you to the wolves or sacrifice you to get other people to get the system to get uh for them to have an out right use you as a scapegoat that would be great i'll definitely be in touch to make that happen sometimes okay fantastic all this uh, and again um you know i'll try my best uh in your opinion what needs to happen in the education system to make things better decentralization decentralization of education okay period that's one of the first things the second thing that needs to happen is the way to bring down tuition rates is um, for government funding okay to uh, to allow people who have student loans to declare bankruptcy right because what's happened in Canada and the United States if you get student loans okay because they're guaranteed by the government if you declare bankruptcy you still owe that money right so basically what it's doing is enslaving people because of because of their need to be educated right and we're going to talk about by the way on saturday we're doing a live stream on specifically education so i'm tapping into some of the stuff that we're going to talk during that live stream if it comes up i'm just going to make myself available and i'm just going to answer questions right but basically what's happened is the government has stepped in and they've guaranteed loans student loans right so banks have been handing out student loans hand over fist right and institutions because they know because they're they're in bed with the bankers right they're in bed with wall street so we have institutions here that are supposed to educate people they're in bed with the bankers the bankers control the government they lobbied government to pass laws to guarantee the student loans they also lobbied government and said hey by the way since you're doing this might as well make those debts not go away if a person declares bankruptcy right so this link triple link was formed and what happened is these institutions started increasing their fees increasing their fees because they know the banks will give the loans for students to go get the uh to go get their so-called education now what happens when these people these kids get these certificates for whatever degree it is that they had right and don't get me wrong there are certain degrees that you need to get for me i wouldn't have been able to do geophysics without my degree right but once these people get their degrees 
And a lot of these degrees you get from these post-secondary institutions are garbage, right? However, that's your ticket to get a job at Goldman Sachs, at Citibank, at a pharmaceutical company, at whatever it is. Another institution that's in bed with the education institutions, with the banking institutions, with the government, with Wall Street, right? So basically, these people getting these certificates where they've spent $100,000 to get a piece of paper that says they're qualified to press a button, right? The only place they can get a job that will pay back their student loans over a 20-year period is with the institutions that are enslaving humanity, that are controlling government and the banks and the education institution. So it's a trap. It's a complete trap, right? Now, you can go in that system and get that piece of paper without going into debt, right? What you can do is go to community colleges, go to polytechnical institutions, right? Because right now, with technology, right? For example, if I have a company, right? If I needed to hire somebody, right? If I needed to hire somebody to do whatever it is they need to do, graphic design or background work for my website if you know once i put it up and stuff like this right or anything else doesn't make a difference right if there were two people that i had to choose from to hire to do this work if there was one person here that had you know paid a hundred thousand dollars to go to yale to get their degree to 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 do what it is that they wanted to do and if there was another person who had no degree but had a website where they had shown their work what they had done over the years and the different people that they had worked with and they were financially stable well they don't even have to be financially stable but i'm assuming if they've done work they had a certain amount of money coming in and they weren't a hundred thousand dollars in debt right but if they had a website right and they had done all the work themselves to get to where they are i would hire them like this i wouldn't even sleep take a look at that person okay there's a lot of things that can be done with our current education system one of the first ones is don't participate in it okay our centralized education system if you want to learn something the tools are available to you online to learn as much of it as you can before you go into an institution and one of the things you can do with almost any degree well many degrees that you need to get okay what you can do is challenge those courses you can learn the material right and go to these institutions if one institution doesn't allow you to do it check out another one right where you can challenge the test you can challenge the final course or you can challenge uh, the course itself and provide the material to show that you know that material it used to be that way anyway, right? And it will cost you a fraction of what it costs you to attend that school, okay? Here's an extended video of Chicho's thoughts on our current education system. Oh, wow, I have one up. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, yeah, I do too. It's I'm going to click on that. Thanks, Index. Is that the one I'm thinking about? But we're going to do a live streams on this. Yeah, that's the one I put up. <laughs> Thanks, Index. You know more about my videos than I do right now. One of the big problems with the... In the education system is actually the use of statistical information to inform voters uh, in democratic systems the uh, the sitting administrations uh, administrations it is more important that the numbers say more people than ever are getting degrees yeah qualifications well, thank you for the bits uh, contribution connor uh, than it is to have discussion on the quality of those qualifications or their applicability to actual rules 100 percent agreed malik the data coming out is garbage recently last week i believe i forget which university it was i think it was fined 100 million dollars or 10 million dollars a few million dollars for producing bogus data okay they were releasing scientific papers based on data that just made up right wow crazy what that degree from that university just became garbage right fun fact from my uh, day job student loan debt is the biggest asset of the scottish government's books really jeez 
uh, which is hilarious since one of their flagship policies is universal free education. <laughs> crazy, crazy, Malik. Do you think Nelson Mandela lied about his story that he's now happy after uh, that he's now happy after prison? Uh, Mel M Mandela's dead. Uh, there was there was issues with Mandela, but uh, you know, I'm not going to judge Mandela. Uh, got to go. Thanks for the talk. My pleasure, Malik, and thank you for participating. Hey, Chicho, nice to catch you. Stream. Hamawar, Hamawari, how are you doing? Connor, again, thank you for the bets. Uh, I'm just catching up with the chat right now. Can you give me uh, confidence for AP testing coming up? Uh, confidence. I'm not sure what you mean by confidence. Uh, I want uh, I went to a pretty good school and got a degree in electrical engineering I would say it did a pretty poor job of preparing students for that line of work I learned more real-life applications than in my classes learn more uh, on my yeah and this guy this uh, same as me like I went to university got my degree in geophysics with a minor in mathematics right I and by the way, if you're going to go into an institution to get a degree, get into a co-op program. A co-op program is basically this. You go to school for one semester or two, and then through the school, you apply to jobs where you also have work terms, right? So for me, it was basically, in general, the way it was set up was go to school for four months, work for four months, go to school for four months or eight months work for four months go to school for four months work for four months right i learned more in my work terms than i did in school okay the job i got as a geophysicist was not because after graduating i applied anywhere to get a job after i finished my final exam okay fourth year final exam i was done right i was flying out the next day I just had to go home and pack and put everything in boxes and send them off, right? And I was walking in the parking lot and I came across someone that I had worked with doing geophysics three years before that, right? And he came up to me and said, Chicho, how you doing? Chicho, hey. I go, oh, Mark, how you doing? How's the life? And I've told that story during a geophysics stream that we had, right? Uh, where I talked about geophysics, my experience with geophysics. And he said, oh, Chicho, what are you what are you doing now? I go, dude, I just finished my last exam. I'm done, right? He goes, okay, okay, give me your resume. I go, I haven't even made a resume, right? I was burnt out. I go, I haven't even made a resume. He goes, no, 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 no. Get a resume. Just get something on paper. Give it to me. You're hired. I go, look, dude, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I don't even have my computer set up. And this was back in the early 1990s right I, I didn't have a laptop my computers were all in school and a lot of doors were locked and stuff like this i go look i don't even have access to a computer right now he goes i don't care get me a piece of paper hand write it if you need to right so i said okay so after studying for like all night and i'm brain dead right i went to like a it was called a kinko's it's a place where you can go you used to be able to go and do uh do work on computers and print things off and stuff like this right so i went there and i typed out a resume with typos in it and printed it off and i dropped it off for him right and i dropped it off for him the next day just before i went to the airport to catch my plane and i took off he found me in san francisco i was traveling around and he found me on san francisco i had called home in vancouver and the guy um the guy had called my parents and said, where is, where is Chicho? I'm looking for him. He's hired. I've been looking for him for three months. I, I left. It was two months or so, two and a half months. So he called me up. My parents told me that this person was looking for me. So I called him up in Ontario. And he was in Ontario, right? I'd flown to Vancouver, British Columbia, and I was in San Francisco. I called him up in San Fran and said, hey, how's it going? What's going on? He goes, where are you? I go, I'm in San Francisco, man. He goes, what are you doing in san francisco you're hired like get get over here i go okay when do you need me he said i needed you the day i told you you're hired the day i saw you i needed you i said okay man uh, i'll make it back right so i caught a bus from san francisco to vancouver and i flew to ontario and i was started working okay 
that's how I got my first job as a geophysicist. It wasn't through the school. To a certain degree, it was because it was a co-op term, but it was based on what I did at that company when I was working there, right? It was me proving myself to this person. And that is the best education you can have. Okay. You know, uh, you know, you may have brought up uh, your opinions on him before, but I missed it. But what is your opinion on Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders is a hack. Okay. I'm going to rustle a lot of feathers right now, right? Sure. Some of the things he said are okay. Some of the things he said were horrendous, horrendous. He rolled over like a little lap dog, right? When he was cheated out of being uh, running for the president of the United States. Everybody's blaming Russia, Trump. Uh, they're, they're blaming everybody, right? For Trump being in office, right? Why aren't they blaming Bernie Sanders? He rolled over, right? He endorsed a war criminal, Hillary Clinton. Really? Okay, so you have to ask yourself, why did he do that? Did he do that because he truly believed that Hillary Clinton was a nice person? That Hillary Clinton was going to do a good job? That Hillary Clinton was a better candidate than he was? Right? That she had the best interest of the American citizens in mind? Is that why Bernie Sanders did that? No. Bernie Sanders did that for the only reason I can think about. They have something on him. Right? They probably went up to him and said, hey, roll over, Dougie. Right? And if you don't roll over, we're either going to release a video of you doing something horrendous. Right? Or we're going to suicide you or someone you love right or something something right but what bernie sanders did by rolling over proved that he's compromised right he doesn't have a leg to stand on if he was willing to do that as a candidate running for the president of the united states what do you think he's going to do when he is the president of the united states do you, does anyone really think that he's going to call the shots i don't think so he's talk nothing else garbage garbage and if you want to know how how much of who he is look at his foreign policy okay uh, some of the things that he has supported and look at his tweet that he put out regarding bush senior when he passed away a war criminal that was responsible for hundreds of thousands of people being died and bernie sanders called him a great president what get a life nelson is not dead he lives in Swiss. <laughs> Nelson Mandel. Nelson Mandel is dead, man. People saying he's alive are the same people who say Hamas lives in Cuba. Hi, Chicho. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, Spooky. Um, my blood is boiling, right? But I agree with you about uh, showing your experience and skills. I made a website showing off my work, and it gets me a lot of job inquiries also networking does wonders even if you lack experience going to conferences or other network networking events will get you job yeah and what's going to happen and this is going to become more and more uh important right so basically back in the day this is this is what the criteria were right and this is still a pathway you can go right where you can go to university get your degree and i Again, I'm not trash talking going to university and getting your degree, but you have to do it right, right? It's like investing. I don't trash talk investing, but be aware of where you're investing, what you're investing in, right? Is it to your advantage, right? So my thing with education is this. Really think about what it is that you're doing, why you're doing it, what it's going to cost you, right? So there's two pathways to show who you are, what you're capable of, right? One of them is this. You can go to university, get your bachelor's degree. That basically means you're a nice little peon. You can do what you're told, right? You know about a certain system, how it works, and the basics of it, and 
wherever you're going to work, whatever institution, wherever you're going to do work for, they can train you the rest of how they go about doing their thing. From a bachelor's, you can go to a master's, which means, you know, two years master's program, which means hopefully two years, there are some that are one year, which means that you're up to date with current events in your field. And you can go into a managerial position when you can manage peons below you telling them what to do. From a master's, you can go to a PhD level. In a PhD level, what you're proving yourself is you can take contemporary knowledge, information that you have, and come up with something new and contribute to the field that you're studying, right? That's what a PhD is. That's your thesis, right? Now, just on the thesis front, the way you can look at a thesis is you being present online and creating content and sharing information. For me, my thesis is the work I've produced online. I didn't have to go get my PhD to create all these math content, all this ASMR math content or politics content, economic content. What I've produced speaks for itself. For me, this is my thesis, right? So if you have two people, one person has gotten their thesis saying they can do all this work. Another person that has been doing all this work online and networking, sharing it, producing as much as they can. Hiring two people, I would hire this person. Okay. Without second, without even thinking twice, right? 100% agree with you on Bernie. I've paid people for graphic design work that I found on Twitch. Nice. Do you know how fucked up politics is in India? Very, right? It's just in India. Uh, Facebook is being sued for uh, interfering with Indian elections because they were deleting hundreds of pages of certain parties in India, right? Guess what? They've been doing the same in the United States and Canada, right? What's going on? Okay, now last question before I have to leave. Okay, I'll just lay it away. And this isn't my view, but I've read a lot of things that make sense. Do you think the U.S. really killed Osama? No, uh, there are a lot of reasons to believe they didn't really pull it off since they won't release any info. Yeah, no, I don't believe it. I think it's garbage. Really? Obama? Uh, one thing, one thing people have to keep in mind. Anything that you've heard Obama say, assume it's a lie. OK, or at best half half truth. OK, Obama was the greatest lying president in U.S. history, more so than Nixon blows away. Nixon makes Nixon look like uh, Noam Chomsky. <laughs> OK, so no. What's up, Chicho? Double Elvis, how are you doing? Welcome to an intense live stream. So this stream is all about the Assad situation. Or did you already discuss it? Oh yeah, we're discussing it full on, man. And it's, it is about the Assange, uh, Assange situation and its implications, okay? And other things, we're going off on tangents as well, of course, right? But uh, it's important. And we're gonna do it again tomorrow, <laughs> okay? We'll see what happens. Uh, really, this is huge, huge, huge. This this event right now, what's what's kicked into gear with Assange, right? It kicked into gear seven years ago when it went to the Ecuador embassy, but it's a full blown motion now. The game has started, right? What's happened right now with Assange is on the same level as Stuxnet virus that was released in Iran, right? By U U S United States, UK, and Israel, that they created a virus to attack in the infrastructure of uh, Iran's nuclear technology. Uh, okay, the, what do you call it? The, the spinning things, <laughs> right? It's on that level, huge. And that one, a lot of people don't really appreciate how large that was. That was on the same level as Manhattan Project, okay? Obama and what he did with the Espionage Act. Very disappointing. Obama was a great little lapdog, 
That's what he was. Chicho, I think your beard got wider since Julian got arrested. Yeah, maybe. Zare, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. All right. And man, I, my heart was broken when I saw Assange coming out. Really. Okay, well, thank you for answering all of my questions. I have to go to math class now. Oh, math class, right on. Wish me luck since I'm not very good at math, but I am trying. Try, brother, try. Trying is the first step, right? And no worries about not being good. As long as you're trying, you're getting something out. Obama broke numbers with all the whistleblowers and journalists he jailed. Yeah, he, he jailed more, more whistleblowers than all other presidents before him right when people defend obama unbelievable unbelievable that, like really unbelievable like because of this assange thing i've been i've been talking with some friends and acquaintances about this personally right and i i'm pretty straight up just the way i am right now sometimes i'm a little bit more gentle sometimes I'm a little bit harsher right but negative self-talk has quite the impact don't tell yourself you're not good at math ah great point cats great point and they don't consider him a fascist yeah obama obama was tag teaming bush jr and clinton before him and bush senior before him and he tag team trump right obama's legacy is trump okay o obama did more horrendous things than well, he did just as much horrendous things as Bush uh, Jr. Really, he started more wars than Bush, right? But I can guarantee you that I'm going to lose some friends uh, over the next... I'm going to clean house a little bit. I've already started because I've had people... Like, literally, last month, I had someone ask me if I like Julian Assange when we were in a discussion where we were talking about WikiLeaks and American politics and Trump's and Obama and Clinton and stuff like this, he looked at me and said, do you really like Trump? As if, uh, do you really like Assange? As if me liking someone uh, is is the reason I should be defending them, right? I, I asked him, I go, what does that have to do with anything? He's a journalist that's being persecuted. If he gets extradited to the United States, I told him, you should be rolling over and this person is considered to be you know hippie liberal this type of person right and i've come across a lot of people like that supposedly from the left that are environmentally aware and their main concern is the environment and stuff like this and i turn to them and go are you guys out of your minds right what are you guys talking about do i like julian aside does that matter right what he has done is unprecedented the only WikiLeaks, the only website, the only news source in human history that has released facts, that has never redacted anything, apologized for anything that they've released that has been fake. That requires respect. And that is why they are going after them, right? Obama did stuff on purpose to make Trump look bad. They don't consider him a fascist. Hey, Chicho. Hello, schedule fix, FX. Hello, FX. That's anecdotal, but I believe it. Yeah, liberals, not shaming. <laughs> Greetings, blessings. Greetings, Dr. P. Welcome, welcome to another stream. Always nice to see you, brother. Always nice to see you. That's the classic liberals. They will defend whoever makes them win over the other team. That's when they defend biden now yeah incredible incredible okay this person actually had to yeah incredible incredible rough day in the neighborhood a eh? rough day in the neighborhood i'm more of a conservative libertarian so do you think he'll go to trial uh zare uh, if he goes to trial we'll never see it it'll be a secret tribunal right look at what happened like seriously chelsea manning right manning man the balls on that girl serious respect there there are like i i can't even 
that there are very few people on this planet throughout human history that have more respect for or equivalent respect for than Manning. Okay. Like, really? Holy cow. What an amazing, powerful human being. Just the just the thought trembled with fear. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you pro pro life or choice? Curious. Uh, freedom of choice, brother. Freedom of choice or sister. Okay. Freedom of choice. Okay. No centralized institution should be allowed to tell people how they should manage their own bodies, their own lives, their own being. You don't have a within scientific bounds scientific with minor quotation marks of course right you don't have an issue with the way wikileaks releases all the data on bulk no there was no way they went over it all and removed anything that would have been more damaging to release than beneficial uh cats technology you could find something and scan a text as big as you want and remove that phrase that name that address that phone number right you can remove people's names so it is it's very much doable you're not sitting there reading every line you're running automation to filter out the stuff free Chelsea 100% right and Chelsea is in jail by personal choice she went into a secret tribunal like really secret tribunal that has been set up to prosecute people to persecute people right she went in there and all they were asking her to do was to reply same questions same give the same answer she had given in previous hearings that were open right the same replies the same answers and what she ended up doing was saying i refuse to participate in a secret tribunal right she could have just said read the same answers as she had given previously she just decided not to participate in this and not to empower them wow man the power in that and to be put in solitary confinement and to give up her body her mind her life her soul right her spirit to allow the system to try to crush it again would you do that i don't think i would I don't think I have the power to do that. Do you think it's their own body? It's the child's to me. I believe in four choice choices, abstinence, contraception, adoption, and childbirth. Uh, I just don't believe in killing. It, it depends. We did a little live stream on this. Uh, that one cool bard. Okay. Where do you begin? Where does life begin? Where does life begin? Where does life begin on a number line, right? Is it when two people decide to have intercourse? Is that the miraculous point where they look in, in, into each other's eyes and they know they will be giving birth to someone, right? Is it at the moment of intercourse? Is it the moment of fertilization? When does life begin? Okay, you have the right to your own, your idea of what that is but really think about it for what for that you would need to have had a, that time to sort of technology that is now still in its crib for that you would need to have uh have had that t time to sort of technology they do have it for you to reach out the name of an informant working for the u.s for example you would have to know the name 
in the documents i'm assuming the names were there they did redact certain bits of information or are you running all possible names and seeing which are relevant to sensors man the programs available to you right now you could run a library of names all known late names run that process computer process through thousands of pages and remove all the names the technology is available right now to do almost anything you want to do with a document with big data that is the power of big data and they have redacted stuff information maybe not you Verma, but the problem i have with the moral argument is that the morality of people using that argument don't care about the child once it's an excellent point I, uh, I forgot about that point that is a fantastic point once the child is out it's like well right now buddy you're on your own 100 percent agreed laugh a lot dude you have no substance for what you what if he, why if he is a child hello chicho uh how has your day been going pretty intense brother pretty intense mike <laughs> there's multiple sources of scientific saying it begins at, at consumption and there's multiple sources of science saying it doesn't the state uh, of things influences me to suppress the feeling feeling but oh, i gotta read this this is dr p the state of things influences me to suppress the feeling body and just be a zombie dr p missed you missed you and some scientists say it's the opposite that doesn't mean anything exactly not that not there isn't uh find them pose da, 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 da. i'm gonna skip over the uh abortion debate the problems uh available right now but how long ago has wikileaks done the huge leaks of cables uh they've done uh, which cable leaks there's a fair bit of cable leaks that came out wikileaks came online uh mid 2000s okay and revolutionary wikileaks is revolutionary huge 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 okay it's not even a scientific issue it's a philosophical yep uh when a czar goat is format, finally uk must resist uk must resist that's exactly what julian assange was saying right how does an implied person of uh, cable gate yeah subscribers for dr p thank you for the sub brother thank you for the sub incredible moments incredible moments okay big data is scary especially for states with no consumer protection hho hi riot how are you doing and 100 percent agree big data uh, what's being done with big data is scary through centralized power big data in general doesn't scare me i love big data i love data data is fantastic gratitude multiply 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 like i love data i love big data i would love to process like i and i did and i have i love processing data really okay but those in power who hold power over our society okay they have to be completely transparent we have to know what is going on with them okay we have to know i'm an anti uh natalist to me it is blessing to not be born <laughs> i'm gonna skip over that brother uh data was the only thing i was good at when i did my cs degree yeah i love processing data man but you can look at things like for me how come all of this data that all these governments are collecting on all of us okay and it's not even anonymous there's a links to everybody right but it should be anonymous but how come we don't have access to all of this data that they're processing everybody's on facebook right how come you don't have access to all this data on facebook okay why is facebook allowed to take all your data and sell it to somebody else to manipulate you i had one person friend i was talking to before and they said oh they have nothing to hide so they have nothing to fear right they don't care and i 
you know, gave an example. I don't know if I gave them an example or someone else an example. I said, basically, take a look at this. Right now, when you have health insurance, if you get secondary health insurance, health insurance, you have to sign a piece of paper, right? In that piece of paper, documentation says they will not cover you. Most of them will say this. They will not cover you for any pre-existing conditions, right? So when you get health care, in your Facebook feed or whatever feed you have, and they're selling that data to healthcare insurance providers as well, right? If you had stated previously that you had back issues, neck issues, knee issues, or whatever it was, right? And then something happens to you while you have health insurance, right? Something happens to your back, your neck, your knee, and they could look at your data, buy all your data from whatever platform you're on, and run filters through your data your conversations your private conversations are being recorded and sold right they can run filters through your conversation and say take out anything that says knee back neck injury or whatnot right and they can say hey a year before beforehand or a day before you got your insurance or 20 years before you got this insurance you said you had back neck or knee issues you're no longer covered the deductibles you've been paying us on a monthly basis they could be into the hundreds of dollars are you know they don't buy you your insurance big data right there are some very famous uh, Papa, there are some very famous computer scientists who recently signed a petition against machine learning for states i.e military police forces it's basically what Pal uh, palantir does cool that's good that they did haha <laughs> that's all right the talk got sidetracked from Assange yeah it did I would love to love big data but imagine the facial recognition data uh, of my phone unlock combined with Amazon's camera facial recognition software the US is not far from a police state it's not riot it's very close to a police state and Assange's extradition to the United States kicks the United States into a police state a huge step forward what I've been telling people is this and I'm in Canada people in Canada and private conversations I've been having is this look the United States is going to lockdown okay it's very close on being on the road the same road that the Eastern Bloc went on with USSR well they were build walls and no one will be allowed to come in or leave okay we're on that road and Canada is in danger of becoming East Germany to the United States as East Germany was to USSR right very close they'll just buy the data from Google yeah also to imagine that the military would ignore machine learning it's just silly imagine the potential to interpret satellite imaging and that is the most basic use I can imagine yeah yeah Facebook is really shitty but it's partly getting a lot of flack just because it's popular to do so uh, every single company has massive qualities of data about you you shouldn't be concerned about no my my concern with Facebook is this I know a lot of people that only get their news from Facebook and Apple recently has announced that they have a apple news thing well they already have an apple news thing right and you can subscribe to their apple news you got to be a retard to subscribe to apple news just the same way you got to be a retard to only get new news from facebook right because you will be retarded right you will be missing tremendous amount of information right so you know you subscribe to this apple news feed they take half your money and give the other half to whoever is providing the news right Apple just came out with a news announcement regarding Julian Assange. They've taken WikiLeaks off their platforms. If I had an Apple product, I don't use Apple products. Well, I have an old something Apple that I use that was a hand-me-down that I barely use. I just have a I just need it for a link. All right? I would not pay a penny to any Apple products ever. Apple is a garbage company. As far as I'm concerned, there should be a huge backlash against Apple. Boycott Apple. Hardcore, man. Get rid of that company. Destroy that company. Boycott.
boycott that company, break that company apart. If I was a major shareholder in Apple, I'd be selling every single stock I have in that thing, or I would go and be going to stockhold shareholder meetings in person, standing up and posing questions to Apple's executives saying, what the hell are you thinking of you're doing? Right? Right? I would do everything in my means to change the top management of Apple. Right? Police already have some pretty uh, scary stuff. License plate recognition cameras, cell phones, uh, triangulation. Yeah. yeah, I was just recently joking about how grocery stores collect your information. How long before what I like to eat turns into a higher insurance premium because I like to eat ice cream. Yeah, a great ride. 100% agreed. Yep, they already uh, have it and use it some machine learning techniques were developed by military research a lot of machine learning techniques revolution time facebook Puff. i get my news from chicho <laughs> and take it with a grain of salt everything i say i like to read those news uh news to know what's being pushed definitely not news yeah i i don't follow any of the mainstream news places they're all propaganda bbc cbs C nbc uh cnf uh, just garbage uh, guardian garbage the revolution that should be taken is from that of uh codependent codependency to one of independence through the avenue of knowledge rather than bloodshed uh 100 agreed dr p 100 agreed dr p by the way if you guys haven't heard of it uh palatine is a terrifying company they do data analysis for police departments military i believe uh Odmic, they're the company that um uh was involved uh in the uk uh, da, 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 da. what was it they were involved in the uk there was a fair bit of leaks that were put out regarding them right um, and they were involved in uh, uh selling data and manipulating elections in uh in an Asian country and an African country, I believe. Something to consider is how much science goes into ways of manipulating us from way back when the Coke bottles were made curvy to now with big data that can undermine the very foundations of what a democracy should be. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, will it be your opinion that will form your vote or will it be a propaganda package personal, personally uh, to who you are from uh, a personally tailored to who you are from what I've seen what I've seen from people that spend a lot of time on Facebook friends and acquaintances that I have they are brainwashed they are programmed they they have this outrage button right they they're politically correct they have this PC outrage button that if you press it they they freak out you can you can watch them their eyes start rolling fumes smoke starts coming out of their heads and they roll around and their eyes twirl and they they freak out right and then you catch them in their freak out moment and you point the finger towards somebody they liked for example obama and a lot of these people love obama right you say hey hey oh relax relax, relax. obama did that all of a sudden you see them they twitch right the programming starts twitching they're having <laughs> They're having it's like they're having a nervous breakdown and then their anger value kicks up a, a lot more and then you can play with that right sometimes i do i'm pretty ruthless in that regard uh i'm i'm sort of personally i'm sort of unforgiving to people who are lazy news consumers right if the u.s becomes a police state it'll be with uh palatrin's help one of the most terrifying companies out there. Oh, dude, I'm going to look into this. I think it's the same company, Cambridge Analytica. Oh, that was Cambridge Analytica? Or is this Cambridge Analytica? Odmic. Cambridge Analytica, we know. Maybe it's Cambridge Analytica I'm thinking about. Is it fictional? Oh, I've looked into this before. Yeah. Well, if there's a revolution, I honestly have no idea the form it will take since we're in the communication era internet internet made things wonky
okay yeah we'll see how it goes sure but the computer power is there for anyone to do it now um almost riot almost riot we're what we see available on a commercial level is at least five generations behind what's being implemented being used against us right now that's my take anyway from what i understand uh, though technology can be oppressive the arab spring showed that it uh, showed how it could be leveraged to help the people it was also show it was also used to us to enslave people as well right so it wasn't all roses i hope we get a paid social media site in the future no ads nothing pushed on you that you don't ask for no data collected to be sold off that's starting cats okay that's beginning okay and that's the death blow the beginning of it of facebook mostly well twitter is pretty uh twitter is gaining a fair bit of power um it's one of the more open platforms to a certain degree it's not it's head and shoulders above facebook uh, but it is still censored but there are other platforms coming online okay social networks cambridge analytica is what uh you were thinking of who manipulates elections they also manipulate the us okay cambridge analytica is the one i'm thinking about i'll have to look into palaturn i believe i've seen them before i looked into them i can't put the context to it right now i agree like any tool is used by both oppressor and oppressed yeah yeah which is which is interesting we'll see where it goes i expect really uh, from what i what i expect to happen the backlash from what's happening with assange is this there's going to be a lot of hardcore programmers a lot of people that are activists is uh peter Thales? palestine is peter Thales little demon baby oh, i look into this man for sure thank you for the info odd mech but what i think is going to happen with julian assange's what's taking place right now is i think we're going to start seeing a lot of leaks coming out i think a lot of people in power are going to be exposed more so than they were before and i think a lot of uh, factions groups are going to pop up that are going to be challenging the powers that be okay those who have accumulated power and those who are suppressing us and bringing about these draconian laws and taking over our governments i think we're going to see a lot of guerrilla activity online and i welcome it you can definitely exist without twitter i mostly did so before and do so now but certain services have uh, struck roots deep in the very soil of society imagine saying no to google and all its offspring services like youtube yeah like for me right now i'm using DuckDuckGo more than google search okay i am obviously on youtube okay so i have the google services there but i'm divesting from that okay i am on bitshoot even though on bitshoot i have less than 100 subscribers on youtube i have like i don't know 28,000 subscribers 29,000 subscribers right and that's growing and it will continue to grow as long as we don't get deplatformed, right so on youtube we're growing fast i expect i hope to start growing on bitshoot and other platforms as well and DuckDuckGo is fantastic okay there are still some searches that i still need google for but DuckDuckGo is where i go to okay and i personally hope that my bitshoot account will suppress that of youtube even though i make money off youtube with monetizing it i would much rather prefer people watch me on bitshoot than youtube to send the traffic to bitshoots bitshoot bitshoots direction right surex dot me is pretty good uh, to supplement duck, duck, go oh really surex dot me for the times that ddg fails okay the onion router is also wonderful the onion i haven't uh, loaded on i haven't played around with tor yet um it's just because i want to 
wait until I get a, another desktop specifically designated for Tor network, for Tor node to be operating 24-7. I2P is really good too. Cool, cool, cool. Great suggestions, recommendations. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, interesting. I'll be sure to use BitChute instead now. Okay. It's just, it's just, uh, I want to empower disruptive innovation coming up, really. That's what I want to see happen. I want to see decentralization. And even, even if it takes, uh, reduces the amount of influence I have or reduces the amount of, uh revenue coming my way or the growth rate that i have i still hope it happens okay i have to go now okay this this suck have a good one we're about to end the stream too a couple of hours we've been going at it uh, pretty intense pretty intense thank you for being here by the way and thank you for all the subs and the um and the follows and the and the bits and the support and stuff uh thank you for being here uh thank you for the mods for taking care of business we had a little bit of troll action coming but not much which was fantastic for me i'm just going to continue to follow the what's going on online uh, i'm assuming the live streams are still going on at unity for j uh, i think decentralization will come as a part of what amazon started i just worry there's a lot of money in not a lot of hands yeah that's one of the big things and one of the things i'm very disappointed about cryptocurrencies right there's a lot of people sitting on a lot of crypto but they're playing it like the markets like wall street they're not empowering alternative media as much as they could or as much as they could have right there has to be more in play and we'll see what happens we'll see how all this plays out uh it's going to be a crazy crazy times for the next few weeks months and definitely years to come uh things are rolling over uh, there was many of us that have been following this that have been waiting uh, for certain triggers to kick in uh, what's happening with the song right now is one of the triggers that has kicked in that is important i remember some government policy uh policy makers stating how facebook doesn't have a monopoly well simply the availability of alternative doesn't mean the alternatives are are viable if i still use myspace instead of facebook i would have a much smaller user base to enjoy enjoy it with agreed and that is one of the main problems as well and all of these major platforms like facebook twitter google and all this stuff they're hijacking right the governments to pass laws to prevent disruptive innovation from coming up coming up right decentralization is not just the availability of alternatives but for those alternatives to be alive 100 percent agreed right which is one of the reasons why uh, as users we have to be aware of the alternative sources of information I hope you're right that things will change. I'm far more pessimistic, but maybe it's my youth. Uh, things have changed a lot. Time to replace capitalism, 100%. Cro crony capitalism. We, we don't live in a capitalistic society. This is crony capitalism. Corporate welfare. That's where we live right now, the state we're in right now. Corporate welf welfare, where corporations have given funds so the lowest common denominator the most retarded among us are elected as leaders right to run their agenda to implement their agenda right look at the western powers look look at your politicians right look at their understanding of the world and how things work they are literally just tools of the corporations right that's a dark road to be on that's a very dark road to be on okay what an intense
intense stream. I just went full on. Definitely not ASMR. <laughs> I'll think about this. I should load this on YouTube just because it needs to be on there. And I think I will. There's some sensitive topics we talked about, but hopefully the algorithms uh, won't zap us. That would be very unfortunate. I think the politicians are much more malicious than stupid. Uh, some, there are majority of them are stupid, really. Majority of them are stupid, but there are some very malicious ones out there. Imagine someone falling asleep to this and grinding their teeth all through the night, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> they would be learning a lot more from this stream than they would watching years of mainstream corporate media. I'm full communist, so I'm already on the list. <laughs> the alternatives aren't uh, written yet, but I've uh, been saying it while a while now. One person could write a Facebook competitor and the infrastructure exists. Just need to be willing to write it and have the programming skill set. Yeah, and once people realize another platform offers them tremendous amount of freedom, and once people start moving, once the, once the wave starts, it'll go so fast. It'll happen overnight. Why don't we take crony capitalism and push it somewhere else? And that's the whole thing with capitalism. Capitalism doesn't solve any problems, crony capitalism. It just moves it around, right? Creates sacrifice zones everywhere. In the past, you would need computers uh, set up all over the world to host your Facebook website. Not so anymore. Not so anymore. Agreed, riot. Capitalism is crony capitalism. 100%. 100%. For me, I'm excited to see the alternatives that are going to be popping up. Uh, I'm excited. Unfortunately, we're going through some hard times, and there's some people that are sacrificing life and limb their souls their spirits their being for us to be able to get our freedom they deserve respect they deserve respect and anybody that doesn't give them respect wow there's a hip-hop uh, from fat john uh, a compilation he did with uh, nuja bass he said disrespect hip-hop and i'll spit in your face disrespect these these people who are sacrificing their lives for us and I'll spit in your face. I think capitalism always ends in crony capitalism, this, but in, I'm not here to debate the merits of capitalism versus socialism, communism. This end, ends badly. That's supposed to be not that emote. <laughs> it's supposed to be different, not that emote. Okay, gang. Thank you for being here. Thank you for t participating. Thank you for keeping us civil. Thank you for keeping us social and sharing information. Thank you for allowing me to vent a little bit and just go ballistic on this thing. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll be back at this tomorrow. We're going to do another live stream. Same live stream tomorrow. I believe we're doing that from 4 till 6. Uh, okay. And then on Saturday, we'll do... Uh, we're going to do a live stream on uh, education. We're going to talk about education. I think that's important uh, to do. Okay. So tomorrow, uh, we're going from 4 p.m. PDT, my time, West Coast Pacific time, until 6. And on Saturday, we're going to go from 11 a.m. to 1, 1 p.m. PDT again, my time. Okay. Seek freedom and become cap captive of your desires seek discipline and find your liberty frank herbert chapter chapter i was doing that's from dune i'm gonna read that again seek freedom and become captive of your desires seek discipline and find your liberty awesome thanks index for being here thank you and good luck at the conference in austria okay time for some liqueur soon time for some liqueur there will be more coming okay Thanks for being here, gang. And I'll see you guys tomorrow if you can make it. Saturday, if you can make that. Otherwise, there'll be more streams coming uh, following week. Okay. 
Bye for now. Take care, everyone. Take care.